what is the sole purpose of leveraging the tools and the benefits of having a private node talking to your Web3 application? Number one, simplicity. Instead of us performing a small contract interaction natively with, with our own Web3 application, we can use an API call to a private node or a private API service that allows us to interact with the blockchain, removing the complexity from scripting or coding our calls natively to talk to the smart contract ourselves. That saves us a lot of time in deployment and development. It allows us to scale the options that we have to provide extra services for our end user. For example, we can deploy an application that allows users to mint NFTs, which we already did on the previous videos. How do we know how many users are actually accessing our site? How many users are interacting with our smart contract? Where are those users coming from? You know, what's their place of origin? From which country are they trying to perform those purchases? Is the network fast to process transactions? And by the way, the, neck, the blockchain transaction speed or the blockchain performance is also very important to take in consideration. The reason why is the user, the end user interaction with the Web3 application and the smart contract has to be flawless because else the end user will not, will not have confidence in our project, right? So I, as an user, I logged in into the website and I realized that the website is way slow to process or mint, uh, mint our NFTs, right? I, as an end user, I don't know anything that's happening on the back end. I don't know how the site is coded. All I know is that I want to build, I want to buy some NFTs, and the site is very slow. The transactions will fail, you know, etc. So instead of us talking natively to the blockchain mainnet, we can send our request, our transaction request, to a private node service that is connected as a dedicated node onto the blockchain. You know, our processing speeds are fast, our transaction, our interaction with that smart contract is happening, you know, with a snap of fingers, like it's super fast. And we want to give the end user that experience. Why? Because it gives us a lot of credibility. You know, when you build a site that it's responsive, that is well-structured, that is easy to manage, your users will have confidence in the project. So that's very important to understand. Once we start leveraging private nodes, you're gonna start realizing the potential that you're opening your web application to do, right? Because with a private node, I can script API calls that could do 10 times more functions than just a single JavaScript code that only, I don't know, executes a main function, right? With a single one-liner API call, I can actually talk and request multiple things or multiple instructions or multiple actions at the same time to the blockchain without having to code excessive amount of code or without having to code an excessive amount of instructions to do the same thing natively. If you don't connect your Web3, um, if you don't connect your Web3 DAP to a private node, you're basically interacting with the public RPC address on, um, let's say, the Ethereum network, right? So if you're talking to the Ethereum network because your smart contract or the, your DAP is developed in the, the Ethereum blockchain, if, if you are not talking using a private node, your RPC call is going to be done to the public RPC address of Ethereum, which is going to be congested. You know, it might, it might take a long time to process transactions, etc. When you have a private node, you're guaranteeing number one, you're sending the transaction somewhere where you can actually monitor it. You can see real time statistics such as performance, latency, you know, transaction speeds, how many transactions have been done, all that information, you can gather that and you can use that data to improve your application. So let's say, you know, 
you have a lot of users from, from North America, South America, Central America, but you don't have that many users in the Europe side, then that it's a key item, right? It's a metric that we can use so then we can expand our marketing to the Europe area, right? Or the Asia area, uh, right? So by having monitoring and visualization in real time, you can then dictate if you want if you want to do marketing to those areas, to those side, or regions, et cetera. But you need to have the monitoring in place. Natively, trying to do that natively, it's gonna be quite the challenge. If you do it through an API call or through a third party node, you'll have that in literally five minutes. Five minutes is only gonna to take to code that, right? What I'm gonna do, I'm going to do a quick demonstration or we're just gonna go into the, I would say the five top private node services out on the internet right now. And let's take a look at each one of them. And on the next video, I am going to add functionality to our React JS mint portal or, or NFT mint portal with, with Web3 model. So Web3 model, it allows or it opens the opportunity for our NFT site to connect to not only MetaMask, but Binance Smart Chain Wallet. Allows us to connect via Wallet Connect, which allows mobile devices to connect to the dApp. So, but in order for us to perform that, we need to connect the, the Web3 app to a private node because Web3 model connects using a private provider. So we need to provide that information to the application so then it can do the transactions because it relies on that, okay? So let's go ahead, let's do a quick review. What are those uh, five main node services that we have available? And uh, we'll go from there, All right? Okay, everyone. So let's discuss the main private node services that we have available right now to work with Web3. Uh, deployments. So like I mentioned, it's a way to scale the application to make sure that we can deliver our solution quicker. I have right here, uh, one of uh, the first sites that we're gonna be reviewing or private node services that we are gonna be reviewing, it's Morales. So Morales is a broad, broad platform that allows you to use API to perform calls to nodes that could interact straight to the blockchain. So they're removing the complexity um, between our application and the blockchain. So we're just making a simple API call and we're getting basically the same output as if we were developing straight on the blockchain, right? And that will take a little bit more time to accomplish. We want to deploy our applications fast. I think their platform is uh, very good as far as um, feature set. I do have the capability of uh, deploying a database as a service kind of model in which I can store. So let's say you want to set a, an airdrop whitelist. You can use Morales to talk to your web front end and gather uh, the user wallets uh, that you are going to airdrop the tokens to, right? Because you need to store that information onto the Morales database. So the moment a, a user does a Web3 connection to the site, it basically signs onto the whitelist. You grab the wallet ID, throw it on the database, and then you can use that database to airdrop the tokens. So that's that's a great way of doing it. They have the service, and they have a free you know free service that allows you to do X amount of calls. I am not sure how much they are. But still, you have a great uh, feature set. And the most important thing, it removes uh, the complexity of, of working with Web3. Uh, I know this will spark a debate and as far as um, as far as uh, decentralization, because right, the, our end goal, my end goal, and your end goal should, sh and your end goal should be to work towards the centralized web. That's what we want, right? Those services are centralized services because if you're deploying your application using a private node, you're having centralization at some point. If they have an issue, they have a some sort of, they face a roadblock, they, they face a production issue, an outage, you're affected. So that's the centralized dependency, right? But to build and start deploying web applications or web three applications, this is definitely the way to go. It allows you to execute faster and then you can continue as you go into your roadmap to develop your 
decentralized solution, right? So you don't need to depend on private nodes because you're now capable of hosting your own private nodes on the blockchain. So that will be amazing, right? Like I told you, it gives you a lot of tools, a lot of uh, flexibility. It gets you the opportunity to to deploy applets or uh, add-ons onto the application. So let's say if I want to build a DEX aggregator, I can use one inch and I've used one inch with Morales. It allows me to build it and I'll do a video how to do that. That would be amazing. So yeah, so in a nutshell, that's Morales. Infura is another one. So Infura, I use Infura a lot to do Ethereum based calls because I can deploy a, an API node or an API endpoint in Infura and then connect my Web3 site to make the Ethereum calls to the smart contract. So let's say users want wants to mint NFTs. I can say, I can tell my Web3 application, hey, send a request to the Infura node that I have. So it's a private request. And then I can see that activity, you know, how many users are trying to mint and so forth. Also, Infura gives you the opportunity to connect to IPFS to send files. So let's say we want to build a NFT marketplace. And by the way, that's coming. I am working on that. I'm going to be building a video series regarding NFT marketplaces. Okay. So to build an NFT marketplace, you need to allow decentralized file storage on your Web3 app. So when users bring their, their, their graphics, you know, their JPEGs or PNG files, and they want to list them as NFTs for sale on the marketplace, that image file needs to be stored decentralized. It needs to be uploaded onto IPFS. And Fura is a great tool to do that, or it's a great service to do that. Plus it gives you the API private node capability as Morales and others, okay? Same with Quick Note. Quick Note, I think it's a very good, good solution. It's, um, I, I've used Quick Note as well. It's very stable. It's multi chain. It's like super multi chain agnostic. You have so many chains that you can work with. Um, and, and, and it's a great way to also inter, uh, interface your Web3 application to a private node. Okay. And finally, so Alchemy also gives you um, that interaction with the smart contract without too much complexity. The thing that I like about Alchemy, it's the, it's the monitoring aspect. I think it, they have one of the best graphical uh, GUI dashboards. I, I, I can see a lot of visual, you know, graphical details of what's happening on my Web3 application. I can literally see, you know, users from which country are hitting the app, are trying to mint. I can see how many transactions have been done and, and around what time on average are my transactions executed. I have so many good things to say about Alchemy. Uh, their Web3 hook or the Web3 uh, module for React is amazing. I can literally do the uh, Web3 calls using Alchemy as the provider. It works flawlessly. I had nothing bad to say about it. It's a great, also it's a great tool, okay? So I just wanted to run a quick you know, overview of those four private node services that, uh, that I work with. Um, Morales is one of them, Infura, QuickNode, and Alchemy. So those four, I strongly recommend you, you also check them out. They allow you to create a free account so you can lab it out and connect to your Web3 application. I'll, what I'm going to do, I'm going to build a couple of videos interacting with each one of them. And we're going to connect our Web3 application to Morales to see how that goes. So you can see how can you do it with Morales. I am going to show it how to connect to Infura so you can see how you can connect to Infura and so forth. We'll do all four and you can see the benefits of, 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 of each one, okay? Okay, so I'm going to cut it on this particular section right here on the next video. I am going to work with the Web3 wallet using a Web3 model to allow multi-wallet capabilities or, or functionalities on the Web3 site. Alrighty guys, so this is the end of this introduction video. I literally wanted to go briefly into each of those uh, node provider services or private node services. In the next video, what I'm going to do, I am going to code and enable the Web3 model module from NPM onto our React.js server. And we're going to connect 
a multi-wallet functionality. We're not going to just use MetaMask. We're going to give the, the end users the opportunity to use the Coinbase wallet, uh, use the Binance Smart Chain wallet, use Wallet Connect so they can actually use their mobile devices and purchase NFTs from a main portal. Alrighty? All right. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't too. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye.